Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Are you looking for a premium high-end cooler that fits on virtually any motherboard for your Intel or AMD CPU? Do you want a cooler that fits onto a micro ATX or a mini ITX motherboard without blocking any RAM slots or PCI Express slots? Do you want a silent cooler that makes virtually no noise and yet provides enough cooling for full load operation and even overclocking? You've come to the right place. This is an amazing cooler for a reasonable price. I love this cooler. Now, as you can see, it's already installed. I've already done that video. You're gonna see that here in just a minute. I filmed that before I filmed this part. I have tested this, I've overclocked it, I've stressed it. I currently have this installed on an i9-7900X 10-core 20-thread CPU. This thing is amazing for a 95 millimeter by 95 millimeter cooler that does not go beyond the socket space per Intel specifications. With a 92 millimeter single cooling fan, it's incredible performance. I was not expecting it to run as well as it did. I thought I'd have to go to one of the big, huge oversized coolers. But as you're gonna see in just a minute, if you wanna run a 10 core CPU at full load, meaning completely stressed doing maximum workload, this thing doesn't even break a sweat. The Noctua NHU9S, yes, that's a product name, isn't it? Has one huge claim to fame. It is a 95 millimeter by 95 millimeter cooler, and that's important because the motherboard specifications from Intel state that that is the protected zone of the CPU socket. The RAM slots and the PCI Express slot are not allowed to impinge upon that, so it has 100% RAM guaranteed compatibility. You don't have to worry about your tall oversized RAM getting in the way, or on say for example, a mini ITX motherboard, the PCI Express slot getting in the way of your cooler. You can put this on any motherboard and you should not have a problem. Problem. Now it is worth noting that there is an option to add a second fan, although that breaks the 95 millimeter on one side and would get in the way of RAM slots on some small motherboards. But as it comes out of the box, 100% compatibility. I have now turned the test bench around to the side so that you can see the RAM clearance with this cooler. I've moved the memory modules to the inside memory slot so you can see what it would look like if all eight modules were installed. Normally with only four of the eight in the Skylake X platform, they'd be installed on the outside modules and you wouldn't have a clearance issue. But if you wanna use all of your memory slots, not just uh, half of them, for example, you have to take RAM clearance into account. This beautiful G-Skill Trident Z RAM is wonderful, but it's tall. There is lower profile RAM out there, Corsair Vengeance LPX being a good example. That fits under the bigger coolers better. But if you want 100% RAM compatibility and 100% PCI Express compatibility, this is as large of a cooler as you can install without running into size issues. I mentioned that you can install a second 92 millimeter fan for a push-pull configuration. The bracket for that is included in the box, but Take a look at where the RAM is. There's no room here to install it without blocking this RAM slot. Now on consumer level boards that only have RAM on one side, this is less of an issue because over here, you'd either have this or you'd have the voltage regulator heat sink and you might actually have room. The fan can also be mounted slightly higher up. There's flexibility in its mounting position. So that might not be an issue. It wouldn't fit with all the RAM on this board, but some boards it might fit. As I said before, the real claim to fame of this cooler is 100% compatibility with every motherboard, with all of the RAM slots, with all of the types of RAM, even on mini ITX boards, because of that 95 millimeter by 95 millimeter out of the box configuration. I also mentioned that I was very pleased with the cooling performance of this. I mentioned before, I had no issues running A to 64 stress test on this 10 core CPU. If you wanted to run a Ryzen 7 1700 or 1700X or an i7 8700K mildly overclocked, not five gigahertz necessarily, but maybe 4.5 to 4.7 on all the cores on Intel or 4.0 to maybe 4.1 on the Ryzen, yeah, this'll do that. I was not honestly expecting that to be the case. I thought due to its size, it would be an issue. But I did notice something very interesting, which you can see clearly now that I have it turned to its side. The fin density of this cooler actually surprised me a bit in person, and it makes more sense now at its excellent cooling performance because it's really surface area and airflow, not physical total size that determines how well a cooler runs. I'd like to show you a comparison. This is a Cooler Master Hyper 612. It is a six heat pipe direct contact cooler, similar in cooling performance to the Noctua. Notice the large size. 
This is a 120 millimeter fan and it is massively oversized compared to that Noctua. But look at the fin density. I'll hold it over it and zoom in so you can see. It has maybe half the fin density. In fact, while I haven't counted them, the Cooler Master Cooler might actually have fewer cooling fins than the Noctua, even though it's larger because there's so much space in between them. Now, it is absolutely true that this large 120 millimeter fan means that a lot of air can be moved through this. I have installed this on various CPUs in the past. It's a good cooler and it's very inexpensive. If you're putting together an i3 or an i5 or a Ryzen 3 or a Ryzen 5 and you want to get maximum cooling, perhaps you live in an area where it's really hot and you want a better cooler than the stock coolers, for $30 to $35, this is not a bad choice. But it is big, it is heavy, and you possibly could be blocking a RAM slot with it due to its size. You're not with the Noctua. The difference is $60, half the price. So you're paying for quality and for efficiency and space as much as anything else. One other quick note, I want you to take a look at the bottom of this. Now I'm gonna show you the bottom of the Noctua when I actually do the installation. You'll see that here in just a minute. But this is not a flat surface. It is, it is cut flat, but the individual six direct contact heat pipes are still individual. There's gaps. There's leftover thermal paste from the last time I had this installed on something. You really have to scrub that with a Q-tip or a cloth or something to get the rest of that out of there. As I said, this is a budget cooler. It's nice for the money, but you are getting something when you pay the premium for the Noctua. I've mentioned AMD CPUs several times in this video. Please note that out of the box that this cooler does not have the mounting bracket for the AM4 socket for the Ryzen CPUs. You have to order that separately. Now you can order this from Amazon. The link will be in the description below and they don't charge very much for it, $8. Now $8 might sound like a lot, but Amazon is shipping it to you and actually Noctua is getting maybe half of that at most because of the, the fees and charges Amazon charges for shipping it to you. So basically it's a break even for them at most. If you are getting a Ryzen CPU, keep in mind you'll need to order that. What's nice about having it available at Amazon versus requesting it from the manufacturer is sometimes you request it from the manufacturer, it takes several weeks to show up. You can just order this on the same day that you order this for your Ryzen CPU and they'll just come together in the same box from Amazon. Finally, I would like to emphasize, you get what you pay for. I've now used a lot of coolers in the past two years, more so than I've used in the probably the past 10 years because of my YouTube channel. When I looked at this on the web, I kind of went, really? That seems kind of expensive for a cooler of that size. Once you've used this, once you've touched it and felt it and installed it, the mounting bracket is very easy to install. The quality of construction, every surface is polished. You are paying a bit more, but you're getting more. It is really nice, and I am going to keep using this in something. Not on this, because this is a test bench, but I genuinely have to say that for its size and for its quality, I think it's very fairly priced. Now that's enough talking. Let me show this installed on this motherboard. We have our motherboard on our test bench, our CPU ready, but before we do anything else, I want to show you this. This is really, really nice. This is the bottom polished finish. Now it's not a perfect mirror surface, but you can see the camera actually in the reflection. This is very, very, very nice. I'll turn it in an angle and you can see it at an edge. There we go. In fact, you can see the A-Data Hummingbird right there on my desk. This is very, very well made. The quality of construction here, you can see is just very, very nice. Noctua provides simple instruction sheets. You can see here LGA 2011. There's three in the box, one for AMD, one for consumer Intel, and then of course one for the high-end desktop. Basically, it's very straightforward. There's text plus pictures. There's only a few steps to install it, a few brackets. It's very easy to follow. One of the reasons why I like the high-end desktop platform from Intel so much is it couldn't be easier to install cooling solutions. Really, I really wish that the consumer platform from Intel did this. The fact that the plate is already, there's no back plates. You don't need access to the back of the motherboard. These screw holes are already here on every 2011 motherboard. So all you have to do is screw these four posts in and then mount the cooling solution to it, just like so. Next, you take these two brackets included in the box and you simply put them on just like so. Using the included four thumb screws, you simply screw them on on the corners. Then use a screwdriver just to tighten them and make sure they're not going anywhere. Now it's time to put the thermal paste on. You don't need a lot, just a rice grain or two. 
You are not trying to cake the CPU in thermal paste. You're just trying to provide enough to remove all the air gaps and spaces between the surface of the CPU, the integrated heat spreader, and the cooler. The next step is this plastic cover actually came on the bottom. You have to take that off. And then you do have to disconnect the fan to be able to screw it on. And so to do that, you simply pull the fan mounts off the side just like so. That's really hard to do over the motherboard. You should put it on a flat surface because it just pulls out from the side and lifts over. It's hard to do in the middle of the air. At this point, you simply line up these uh, two screws to here and here. The other one goes here. There's room to go through. And then you simply screw it down. Start a little bit one side, then work on the other. Then come back to this side. And then back to the other. There are springs on the screw, so you'll be able to screw them down until the springs are tight and then no more. Now you just reattach the fan. Which orientation where the cable goes depends upon your clearance. I like to have it up here, even though it's not as attractive because it keeps it away from the RAM and the voltage regulators, etc. You can turn it around so it's on the bottom, but then that cable is really close to everything. That's a personal preference. Included in the package is this low noise adapter. Now, because this is a four pin PWM fan, if you go into the motherboard's BIOS, you can set up fan profiles. If you wanna leave everything in default and don't wanna mess with the motherboard, the nice thing is connect this between the motherboard and this, and it will slow the fan down using the built-in profile of the motherboard. It's sort of a trouble-free, easy option if you just wanna slow the fan down. Otherwise, set up a profile on the motherboard. Hopefully this video has been informative or interesting or perhaps just entertaining for you. Like it if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check the links in the video description. Links to everything I've shown you in the video will be down there. Links to this, the AMD uh, mounting kit, and of course the Hyper 612 that I showed you earlier. If you're going for a budget build, I understand this might be a bit more than you want to spend. The cooling performance of the Hyper 612 and this are similar. What you're getting is a compact size and a better quality of construction, not necessarily better cooling. They both actually do a very good job, but this thing is really well made. Genuinely impressive once you've used it in person. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.